Welcome to the Drum Computer Tutorial Series. My name is Tom Cosm, and this video is going to be on the mixer area. Now you might be wondering why I have Ableton Live open, the, open in the background, and that's because at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about Drum Computer's multiple audio output capabilities. But for now, let's just focus on the mixer. Here it is here. I like having the kit view open because we have our eight individual drum hits here, and they match up perfectly with the eight individual channels we have in the mixer area. These are the channels here. We also have a reverb or two reverbs over on the right hand side, but I'm going to talk about them soon. I'm just going to turn them off for now. So let's have a look here at what the mixer offers us. So per channel, let's just go through one. We have a mute, so I can get rid of the kick. I can get rid of the snare. Let's get rid of the hats. Very good. I could click on them again to bring them back in, or I can click on the unmute all button to get rid of all the mutes, so everything will come back. As well as the mutes, we have a solo, so I could solo the kick. Solo the snare. Let's solo the synth. Very good, and just like the mute, we can unsolo all with this button over here. We have a pan so we can make things go to the left or to the right in space. We can pan the snare to the left. Let's bring the hats all the way to the right. We can double click to bring these back to the center. Like any parameter in Drum Computer, if you double click, it's going to bring it back to the middle. Or if you double click any parameter, it will reset it to what the initial uh, parameter value was, the default parameter value. We of course have our volumes, so this is pretty self-explanatory, but this is for getting things and sitting right in the mix, kind of you know, getting your, getting your loop all sounding good together. So this is where you can do all that. And then we have the reverbs, the room and the hall. Now these actually live over to the side. They're over on the right here. We have a room and a hall and they're on return tracks. What are return tracks? They're audio tracks that sit there and they wait. They wait for you to feed it some kind of audio, then they apply the audio, in this case a reverb, and then they return that audio back into the mix. So don't be mistaken and think that there's one, two reverbs on each track. We don't have individual reverbs per track, we just have two, one room and one hall, but by using these send dials we can send any of the tracks over to those reverbs. So why do we have two? Well let's take a look at the room first. I'm going to turn this on, let me just bring everything down like so i'm just going to double click like i said before okay i'm going to turn the room on and let's just solo the snare so we can really hear it so the room reverb emulates a room it's a room where you're hitting your drum there's some walls it's quite small it's got quite a bit of character to it and it just gives it a little bit of space so let's bring up the snare and we can now hear the room reverb being applied to the snare we can change the size of the room so that will make it last longer and we have a tone as well, so opening this up lets through more high frequencies, more high, high frequencies are reverberated, or we can bring that down to make it quite muffled. And let's bring the size down a bit here. Now the reason there's a room is because it's really handy to send multiple drum hits to a room reverb that might not actually sound that, that, that glued together naturally, because once they're all put in the same style of room, it, it brings them together. It sounds like they're all coming from the same place, from the same kit. So for example, let's uh, solo this room shot. And let's send that over to the room. Very good. Let's solo these hats and these hats. And let's send them to the room as well. So now all of these things sound like they're in the same room. They might have quite different flavors. Some might be digital, some might sound analog or like an actual physical kick drum. But once you apply a very gentle room reverb, they kind of come together and it's a really good way of gluing things together. Okay, let's talk about, we'll bring the room down on these. Let's talk about the hall reverb. So as the name kind of implies, the hall reverb is much bigger. It's much grander. Uh, it's emulating a giant hall. So I'm just going to turn this on and I'm going to send the snare across so you can hear the difference there. So you can hear that. A lot of space, a lot of depth. We have a size as well, so I could bring this up to make it massively huge. And we have a tail as well, so this is how long it lasts for. So we can make this into a giant cavern if we like. But let's bring it down a little bit. Of course we have a tone as well if you want to muffle some of the high frequencies. But let's bring it up. Very good. So the hall is more for effect. It's more of a drastic uh, uh, kind of characterization type thing. It's, it's saying, hey, this has a reverb, whereas the room is more about bringing things together. So one thing we can do here, and well, actually I should mention that things in the mixing view are actually modulatable. So you can actually use these as a destination in your modulation matrix. In fact, in fact let's do that right now. I'm going to bring the hall down on the snare, like so. And I'm going to go across to our sequencer page, and here's our snare here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that modulation sequencer. I'm going to use this modulation tab to actually bring this mod up on the second snare. So even though we can't hear every, anything, the second snare has the information that this particular hit is, needs to be 100%. 
Now if we go back to our synthesizer area and we choose that from the drop down menu, remember it was sequencer 3 mod, and I'm going to choose the hall reverb as the, as the destination. So the source was that modulation sequence that we had, the hall is the destination which is this dial here, and I'm going to bring this up. And you can hear that second, that second snare now is getting sent to the whole reverb, the first one is clean. We can make this come down quite a bit. Very good. So that is the mixer area and the reverbs and how they're used. Now I just quickly want to show you how the multiple audio outputs work. So by default, I'm in my DAW here, you can see in Ableton Live, let me just get the track up for you. Here it is here. So we have a MIDI track and we have drum computer on there and the master all the drum hits that we've made are getting mixed together and coming out this one single channel. But what if I want to separate those channels? What if I want to play with the kick and the snare separately as separate audio channels in Ableton Live? Well, we can do that. First in Ableton Live, I'm going to create two new audio tracks, one and two. We'll call this kick and snare, like so. I'm going to go back to drum computer. I'm going to go into my settings menu. In this area here, we can define where each one of the eight drum hits goes. So at the moment, the kick and the snare are going to the master, as is everything, including the room and the hall. But I want the kick to go out to a separate one. So I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to choose three and four. Master is one and two. I'm going to choose three and four for the kick. And I'm going to choose five and six for the snare. Now, once I've done that, you can't hear the kick and the snare anymore because they're, they're getting sent to nowhere right now. I'm going to close this down, enable to live on my kick channel. I'm going to go audio from number one drum computer, which is the channel I have drum computer on. And in the second drop down menu, I'm going to choose three and four. And then I'm going to turn the monitor to in. And now we've got the kick coming through this channel. I'm going to do the same with the snare. Let's go drum computer. And I'm going to choose five and six. Monitor in. So you can see now we have the snare and the kick separately. And that means we can do things like we could apply any kind of effects that we like. Let's do a Redux from Ableton Live on the snare. Very cool. Or we could add a delay. We don't have any delays to play with. So let's put a delay on. Very good. So that is the multiple audio output capabilities of Drum Computer. Very handy. Very good for doing your mixes. My name's Tom Cosm. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.